Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another video. We've got the Premier Division show. I'm going to look back at the games on Friday and Sunday and uh, give my predictions for the games this weekend um, in the FAI Cup. So I suppose really it's the Premier Division and FAI Cup show, really, isn't it? Um, I'm going to start off at Richmond Park where I was at the game for St. Patrick's Athletic. There's a vlog out for that if you haven't seen it. St. Patrick's like nil, Bohemians nil at Richmond Park and as I mentioned in the vlog I wasn't expecting a nil-nil draw but it wasn't like a proper nil-nil draw it was entertaining match um, very very high tempo um, fair to say it was a real Dublin derby there was a bit of bite to it some good challenges good tackles in, in the game a bit of quality as well um, a bit of poor quality at times as well so it had everything it had everything apart from goals and um, I never felt like watching the game. I felt like even the later the game went on, I felt like someone's going to nick it here. Like, you know, either Bowes or Pats are going to get a goal. So I was very surprised. Excuse me. I uh, just had a mini roll that it actually finished nil-nil. But it would have been entertaining enough, I think, for neutral if they were at the game, if there was a neutral at the game in particular, um, watching it. Who deserved to win the game? I think a draw was a fair result in the end on, on reflection and having thought about it, giving myself a few days as well uh, and that sort of thing. I do think Bowles, I still think Bowles did play the better football generally in the game, particularly second half when James Clark really came into it. Pats looked like they tired a lot, actually, didn't they? Um, and they played a lot of long balls, I think, Pats in this match as well, to be honest, which is some of it was a bit frustrating, I have to say. As a Pats fan as well, I'd have to say it was a bit frustrating to watch. Uh, some of the long balls were fairly blind, hoping that Carty would make something out of nothing. That's the problem, really, with Conor Carty, because Conor Carty is such a hard worker. It's unbelievable. And sometimes he'll make something out of nothing in terms of winning the ball. He shouldn't win on that. But that means at the same time that players sometimes can get a bit lazy and just even on the subconscious level get lazy and just boot the ball and say, look, I've nothing on here. Carty might get, get it. The problem is Carty, he tires early in games because of this, the effort he puts in. He's very good at holding up the ball. He can link up play. He can run the channels. The one thing he's really lacking is composure and finishing. Um, you know, it, in the number of games he's been like that without going into too much detail into other games, but he, he's been like that in that sense. If he can sort that out, Pats have a striker. And I've seen this in a way with Draper when he was at Drotada where he was missing a lot of opportunities but doing the other things well. Afalabi, same, at Bowles. You know, he was missing opportunities but doing a lot of other things well. I see that in Carty as well. So you just feel like, you know, a bit of composure and finishing. And Carty can become a striker. The the kind of um, you know, the raw ingredients are there. You know what I mean. At the end of the day, you do need a striker to score goals. You know, um, but he does everything else really, really well. And and you know that's what kind of gives me a bit of confidence. If he can just keep his composure in this game, he did miss one great chance. I felt in the first half, uh, Bowles made a mess of the clearance, Casper, and I think Carty a bit of composure. He side foots that into the net. To be honest, with the second half. The one he hits the bar, I would say that's just a bit unlucky, to be honest with you. Um, good link up play with Lonergan, actually. I thought that that was better from Pats's point of view, I think. When when Lonergan came on, Amelia came on, actually, it was a bit more link up play with Carty. And that's what you want to see in and around Carty. He wouldn't have done that earlier in the game. That link up play was lovely between him and Lonergan. In the end, Lonergan hits the upright and comes out, and Carty then hits the upright. But that's something I'd like to see more of. I wonder if something Pats could explore. Maybe him and Lonergan up top. I don't know. Let me know if you're a Pats fan what you think about that. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd talk about that a little bit more because I talked about um, the game generally, didn't I, in the vlog as well. Um, for Bowles, as I said, I do think they play the better football in the game generally. And I think Akintunde has to score the header. Um, he hits the upright, but that was the easier chance out of the three shots that hit the upright. It was um, Novak had too much space to get the cross in, but it's a good cross into the far post. It's a free header for Akin Um He doesn't even have to generate the power. And maybe that's the problem. He goes too much for power into the header. He should really score. It could have been the game for Bowles. Uh, Joe Remen had a header that just went over as well from a corner. But I thought that was the best chance. Pass defended for quite well, though, I thought. I think for the football balls are playing, the intensity balls are playing, and Clark was making those driving runs in the second half. I've said it before, he's such a ball carrier. And I said in the preview for the game that he could be very dangerous between the lines, particularly with Jamie Lennon out 
And with Jamie Lennon out, there was a lot of space there, particularly in the second half when Pat's tired a bit. Um, you know, Lennon as an anchor man is so underrated. It's, it's unbelievable. And Clark had a lot of space. And he took advantage of that. He's such a good ball carrier. He's such a good dribbler. Uh, he had a number, a couple of chances. Not easy chances now. We did have a few chances. One shot was uh, was wide, just wide as well. And, um, you know, in the vlog, we actually gave Redmond man the match with Clark. was very close, in my opinion, as well. Uh, the reason why we gave Redmond man the match is because he dealt with Afalabi brilliantly and it was all true the match. Clark really came into a big time in the second half, though. So it was a very interesting game. The point doesn't do any team any good in a sense and doesn't do them any harm. If you're talking about challenge for the title, it doesn't do them any good. I don't see either team challenge for the title, even though Sean, Sean McRovers are struggling a little bit. I just don't see it. But in the race for Europe, it's not a bad point technically for both sides, in my opinion. And um, both sides would have felt they could have won the game. As I said, both generally better football, played the better style of football, I thought. But Pats had probably the better chances overall, even though Bowles had the actual best chance of the game. So let me know what you think of the comments. Bowles fan, Pats fan, what did you think of the game? Uh, what's the verdict on your own team going forward? Uh, do you think they can mount a serious title challenge? Or would you agree with me in terms of, you know, the European race is the real deal here? Um. We'll get on to Cork City and UCD now, and I think it was a big blow for Cork City not winning this game. I said in the preview they had to win this game. Um, you know, we've got nine games left. Cork are five points behind Drotada. I know they've gained the point in Drotada, but um, at the same time, they have to be beating UCD at home. Unfortunately, UCD, you know, not a bad side. Sean Brennan looked good in this game for UCD. Uh, it was a very good equaliser from Bishop. He was unmarked, to be fair. But um, it was a very good cross into the box from Norris, actually, that equalised for UCD in the game. But Cork had a lot of chances in the first half. They played some good football, good counter-attacking football. It's hard to believe it was Barger's first goal for the club in 26 minutes. Um, Lorcan Healy won't want to see that again, will he? Um, if you've seen that in a five-a-side, to be honest, he'd be kind of nearly giving out to the keeper. Um, I would, anyway, but that's a, that's a different thing. I just don't shut up. Um, but yeah, for his first goal of the season... Um, but he deserved it as such. He, he was involved in a lot of Cork's good play, and he had another shot that went over the bar earlier in the game as well. So he deserved it as such. And Cork did deserve to be up front ahead at that point as well. They had, um, you know, Warman looked good for them actually. So he did the twenty-one-year-old Englishman. He looked good for them, Warman. So it'd be interesting to see how he he does in the coming weeks. He he attacked very well for 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 Cork City as well in the game. He he looked a good player and Coffee. Had a couple of little chances as well. He had one chance where it was a very good swift move by Cork City and he just casually side foots it, but it's not even into the corner. Um, but they'd be disappointed not to get the points, Cork, because unfortunately they need to be winning those games, don't they, at this point of the season? It was good for them that Rory Keaton came back and on as a sub. Obviously, his father died in that, and you don't know what, what way uh, a player's head is, you know, it's not going to be in a good way anyway, you know what I mean? But it's hard to know with certain individuals, it's better to be out on the pitch or not on the pitch. Um, it, That depends on the individual, but Keating being back, they've missed him badly. They've missed him badly, and they'll need him now big time, big time. But um, it's difficult to see them getting out of this because I do think Drotten and Sliger are capable of getting more points as well. So they have to overturn that. And it's very difficult. This was an opportunity for them to overturn that. And unfortunately, they couldn't do it. Cork City fans, let me know what you think. UCD, in the end, it's a good point for them. And, um, you know, they, they'll they keep going. But, um, you know, they're as good as down, let's be honest about it. Dundalk and Sliger Rovers at Oriel Park. And let me know if you're at Oriel Park as well for this one, be the Dundalk or Sliger fan as well. Because... I think Dundalk fans will be will agree that they got away with one here. Um, they did get away with one. They finished Dundalk one slider over now, but it's a massive three points for Dundalk because if they didn't win this match, even if they drop drew it, you know they could have been still five points behind Bowes and six behind Pats and all that kind of thing. So they took advantage of Pats and Bowes drawn, and they're very much in the hunt for Europe. They didn't think they were out of it, but they were kind of behind those teams. Daniel Kelly's header on ten minutes. We'll get to Sligo's miss uh, after this. Um, very good play actually good play by Horgan and Slogan to release uh, Archie Davis who um, good attack and full back Archie Davis I've actually liked him this season to be honest he's been one of the most impressive right backs in the league to be fair and he stands up a beautiful cross where Kelly heads it into the net to give Dundalk a 1-0 lead um, 
you know, I think the miss from Pedro Martello before that was a strange one because he heads the ball across into the box. I can't remember off the top of my head who crossed it into the box. It might have been Radislavic um who who crossed it into the box. Um and you feel all he has to do is hit the target with his header. He doesn't have to play the cross goal or anything like that, just hit the target straight. But for some reason he heads it across goal and wide and that looks like it's actually harder to do that in that position it was a free header as well remember it was a free absolute free header he must be a yard out from goal i don't know if he's thinking i'm trying to get into his head a little bit i don't know if he's thinking to himself you know the keeper might come across and i'll try and play it into the far post maybe he tried to be too clever but it was actually harder to do what he did um I don't. I think the keeper would have had a very difficult Walsh. Um, if Nicholas has gone to Wrexham, by the way, in case you didn't know, um, Walsh would have found it difficult to save that if he nods it in the front post, and it's a terrible miss. And then two minutes, a minute or two later, on Dock take the lead, and that's a massive swing in the game, so to speak. And you know, Sligo chances, the chance in the second half, the chance at the end, uh, which was saved by Shepherd as well. You know, uh, at the end of the game, and you know the chances and the. They caused problems, to be fair, and they should have had a penalty, to be honest with you. They should have had a penalty. I don't think too many can argue, even Dundalk fans could argue with that in the second half. I do. They should have had a penalty. Levac looks like he's fouled for me. Um, and I've looked at it a few times, and I've tried to see how it might be a penalty, but for me, it's a penalty. Um, sort of robbed a little bit there as well, it has to be said, but you know they'll be disappointed because they feel like they should have got something out of the game. Uh, they should have went in front earlier on. They didn't. They only have themselves to blame there, but they definitely should have had a penalty, which would have put them level. It had they scored it, of course. We never know. We never know. Uh, there's nothing to say they would have scored a penalty. Carly did miss a penalty the week before, but they'll be disappointed with that, I think, Sligo. And uh, it's a massive result for Dundalk, particularly in the circumstances, because they didn't play brilliantly. And um, they were probably fortunate enough to win at 1 0. So they'll be absolutely delighted with that. And it just keeps Dundalk uh, firmly, really. In the mix, doesn't it? Um, it finished Shelburne one, Shamrock Rovers one, Talca Park, another Dublin derby here, and uh, Gavin Malloy has had her four minutes of stoppage time, uh, given Shelburne uh, shared the spoils. Poom had given Shamrock Rovers the lead in twenty one minutes, and with a lovely header after um, well not a lovely header, but it was a lovely cross. I think it was Dylan Watts who actually played the cross in, and Poom finishes with a header and. You know, Gaffney caused a lot of issue in this game as well. And Rovers looked like they were going to win this game comfortably, actually. They kind of dominated possession. They had the better, the chances and that kind of thing. But the last 20 minutes or so, Shelburne really came on to it. And this is what happens at times when you're 1-0 up and you don't kill a game. Uh, Rovers might have killed this game last season, let's be honest about it. But um, at the moment, they're missing. They're really missing Jack Bourne, obviously. They're missing their two wing-backs, Clark and... Um, Bruges a big time because they give them they basically give them legs and energy there Finn and Kavanagh, not the players they were in my opinion and it really does slow them down and when you're playing that wing back system I always think you need reasonably agile players uh, fit players, not saying they're not fit but you know what I mean, they are older you know um, to be able to get up and down aggressively and they don't, they don't have that at the moment it's, it's kind of killing them in a way now they are still top of the league they are still top of the league and um despite having 14 wins at, at 27. Um, but that just shows, in a way, how strong they are, are in a sense, as well. But I, I think their nearest challenge, without getting into too much detail yet, was always going to be Derry City of all their players pretty much back now as well. So um, I think they're the only team. They're, they're the team I'd be looking over my shoulder at those Shamrock Rovers. But they do need to find that consistency. And this is a blow, um, you know, letting in that late equaliser. And they were warned just before that. Malloy had a chance just before that, and it was from that corner that um, Shelburne scored. I think Manus has to be disappointed with this, though. Manus seems to be stuck to his line. Malloy heads it, out, heads it in. I don't know. He's definitely in the six-hour box anyway. And Manus just seems to be glued to the line. He's been quite poor, Manus, I have to say, since he's come back. And I don't know. I know his leadership and command and all that. Um, but I think it's he, he, he's probably starting to drop finally now. Um, and Liam Paul wasn't in too bad in goal, so it'd be interesting to see if Bradley makes a call there. But um, he could have done better with a goal the other week as well, man. As I feel. So let me know if you're Shamrock Rovers fan. Do you think Paul should go and goal, or do you think Man should keep his place? But I've no doubt Rovers will be looking for a new goalkeeper next year. 
Um, but Shelburne did deserve it in the end because they put on pile on the pressure in the last 20 minutes and caused problems. And looks like Jack Moylan's going to stay at the club as well, which is huge, till January. So um, you never know. Shelburne will be thinking you never know. We're, from their point of view, they'll be thinking we're six points off top four. We're still there. For me, they still draw too many matches. Now, this is a good point, but in a general sense, they draw too many matches that win enough. So even though they're not that far behind, I just don't see them putting them run together to... Um, bypass some of those teams like a Pats or a Bowes or Dundalk for example but ultimately I think it's a good point for them and a disappointing point for Shamrock Rovers so on Sunday then because of their European exploits um, Derry City took on Drogheda United and to be honest it was a very good result for Derry City I worried about them a little bit coming into this game because Drogheda can be very very sticky opponents Barry's tea, guys, has to be the tea. Drogheda can be very sticky opponents. And um, when you're in the middle of that European adventure, mentally it's easy to switch off. Particularly when they they lose 1-0 in the first leg in Kazakhstan. They were only back at Friday and stuff as well. And the second leg to look forward to where you're very much in the tie. Mentally you can switch off. So this was a great result for Derry City to go and beat Drogheda 3-0. And it helps that most of their squad is available now so they can have a bit of rotation there as well and, you know, that kind of thing. But, yeah, I mean, you look at the players in the bench, I'm just looking at the players in the Derry bench for this game. Patching, McElhenney, Patrick, that is, McMullen, McGonagall, who came on, Connolly, <laughs> Doherty didn't come on, Dummigan didn't come on, Kavanagh didn't come on. Arguably, and this is arguably, the only squad in the country that has a better squad in terms of players on the bench is Shamrock Rovers. And that's arguable at this minute in time. I think they're a little bit weaker than they were Rovers in that way in the, the, the last few seasons. So in Derry, of everyone available. <laughs> um, and But Draw did a great chance. Uh, did a great chance to take the lead. Uh, Robinson plays a good ball across the Foley, but Brian Maher makes an excellent save. And even though it's he comes out so quick that it's a point-blank range, there's not much of a target Foley can aim at. Um. So it is a good save rather than a bad miss, to be honest. And that was important. And, um, you know, Derry going front in 41 minutes through Jordan McIniff. He's got about seven or eight goals this season for them. Again, Michael Duff, vintage Michael Duffy. Um, hair and down the line. Um, gets his head up, picks out a simple pass to McIniff, who finishes brilliantly to, to give them the lead. And, you know, they could bring <laughs> Patch and McMullen, McElhenney, McGonagall, Connolly all came on, pretty much all of them made an impact as well, to be honest with you. Um, compare that, no disrespect to Drotter, but bringing on Darren Noon, Aaron McNally, and Warren Davis, you know, there's a big difference and an experience as well, like, you know, that kind of way is a massive difference there. Um, you know, but 2 0 McGonagall, uh, Patching plays a lovely ball through. McGonagall are threatened this a number of times actually running in behind and he finishes well on 85 minutes to make it 2-0 and on 88 it's rounded off lovely ball through by Mike Mullen Duffy's in acres of space so to be fair Drogheda are probably pressing forward at this point and, but it's a lovely finish past Wogan who who made some, two good very good saves in the match he made a good save from Kieran Call and another very good save was it McGonagall might have been McGonagall he made himself big yeah it was, it was a very good save as well Um and um he showed his metal wogan, I think, because I think he struggled a bit the week before against Bowes. There was a couple of he obviously gave away a penalty. He's only 17, but he gave away a penalty, and I think he could have done better with two of the goals as well in that match. So at 17 to come out the following week and put in a good performance um says a lot about him, to be honest with you. So fair play to him, even though he conceded three goals and uh, you know, draw the they'll be reasonably happy where they are. They won't be satisfied if that makes sense because they'll be thinking to themselves we're only five points out of Cork and I get that um, and it's easy for me to say but I suppose I can see it with a clearer head I suppose um, than Drotted and Cork fans when you're down near the bottom of the table but I just don't see Cork getting enough points to overtake Drotted I think Drotted will be fine uh, they'll obviously need to keep it form and they're working hard they do do that so I can't see that changing but for Derry it's a massive win because it puts them uh, touching distance of Rovers because they win their game in hand for example they're only two points behind Rovers and I wouldn't be surprised if they do particularly if the players are available now now if they get into the conference league 
that might take away a little bit from them from the league. So it's a strange dynamic at the moment. They're still in the cup as well. They've got Pats next week as well. Um, in a way, it might do them any harm getting knocked out of the cup, believe it or not, because of Europe and the league. But they are the one team with the quality that can catch Rovers. I've no doubt they'll at least finish second, though. So, yeah, it's interesting. Stuff, let me know, Derry City fans, ahead of the game on Thursday. Are you confident? Uh, I'll be going there to Tal Stadium to vlog that game, by the way. Are they confident? Are they confident in the league? And obviously, we'll get on to the cup games as well. Um, so, yeah, so they're basically, that's the league games. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so on to the cup then. Just getting some of the fixtures up here. And I'll just go through quickly some of them, guys. Um, and talk about maybe some of the bigger ones. But, yeah, Friday night we have, um, obviously, I mentioned in Europe, uh, Derry City do play uh, at home, Tala Stadium as such against uh, Tala for Kazakhstan 1 0 down. So let me know in the comments, Derry fans, what you think about that one. I think they might go through personally. I think they might go through. Um, I think it could go to extra time penalties. I'll 2 1 Derry and they win on penalties. Bohemians and Rockman to Cork now. Bowl shouldn't have a problem here. Let's be honest. They can probably rotate a few players. They played Lucan last season on the club. I think they beat them 2 0. I was actually there. I think it was 2 0. Um, their keeper was excellent in the match, but um, they'll wear them down eventually at least. Well, I think they'll win comfortably enough 3 or 4 0. Bray and Dundalk. Um, Bray and Dundalk looks like it could possibly, you would think, you know, this could be a banana skin for Dundalk, but Bray are really struggling at the moment and they're sliding down that table in the first division. Now, sometimes that can be a release for a club. Um, and they do have some good players, but we can see some bad goals in recent weeks, very bad goals. I just think Dundalk will have too much quality for them and beat them 2 0. Cork City and Waterford, that's a big one. That's a big one because Waterford will be looking, Waterford will feel they should nearly be targeting the playoffs now. They're not winning the league in the first division, they're not winning the league in the first division, so they should be targeting the playoffs now. Um, and they might have be more confident than Cork in many ways. You know, Coughlin's banging in the goals, former player there, of course. Um, you know, the the it's a difficult one. Will Keating start for Cork? I'm trying to think there as I was talking, but will Keating start for Cork? I think he might do. Um a cup run both teams would like. Of course, Warford a good cup run last season where they got knocked out just in the semi-final, the RC actually against uh against Shelburne in a tight game. I uh, was actually there for that one as well but um, Munster Derby Cork Waterford Premier against First Division could be a dress rehearsal for a playoff place easily this could be the playoff final so to speak or the you know the Premier relegation the Premier First Division uh, promotion relegation playoff final I should say and I'm finding this difficult I, I, I have a feeling I have a feeling Waterford will go through I have a feeling Waterford will go through I'll tell I think they'll edge it 1-0 Kerry FC and Drotada, interesting trip for Drotada down to Kerry. Interesting for Kerry to play a Premier Division club. This is a great opportunity here for Drotada to have a good cup run. They win this during the quarterfinals. Um, you know, the last couple of years I mentioned that they were unlucky to lose in the first round, pretty much Drotada. And, you know, they got over that with Sligo, with the win over Sligo. So, um, this year. So, I do think they'll win it. I do think they'll win it, but um, they can't be complacent. 3-1 Drotada. UCD Galway. Um, You'd argue Galway are, are more of a Premier Division team than UCD. Um, they can afford to go on the cup run Galway as well because really they have the first division wrapped up, let's be honest about it. I think they'll do enough here as well. I think they might win 2-1. Uh, Finn Harps, Scary's Town. Finn Harps would be a major shock if they went out Scary's Town, Scary's Town, but um, they'll have to be very, very careful. And, and sometimes they can play a bit naively, Finn Harps, but they should have enough in the tank here. 3-1. Um for me, for Finn Harps on, sorry guys, I'm just going through the fixers here. Then on Sunday, we have, yeah, on Sunday we have St. Patrick's CY against Wexford FC. And, uh, you yeah, know, the only team from Rings End as such, as I say, still in the competition. Um, Wexford up and down in the first division, but look, ultimately they've got the quality and they should be looking to win this. I think they will win 2-1. And it's supposed to tie it around as such. Uh, Cork and Waterford is a big one, in my opinion. But Derry and Pats on Sunday. Obviously, Derry would be, after playing in Europe on Thursday, Pats have a week to prepare. It is in the Brandywell. Derry have everyone back. You look a good side, playing with a lot of confidence. Um, 
I do think it'll be tight though. I find this one hard to judge as well because it could depend if Derry go through or not in their mentality, um, how fatigued they might be. Uh, as I say, Pats have a week to prepare. Lennon is a loss for Pats, and I think he could be a loss in this game as well. Um, the way Derry play in midfield, so Pats might have to come up with some different solutions there. I thought they were a bit open, um, when they were running back, so to speak, against Bowes, and that could be a similar situation here as well. Uh, without having that anchor man in there, um, how do you call this one? You know, I have to go with my head though. I do think it'll be very, very tight, but I think Derry might just do enough. I think they're more, um, with everyone available, match winners as well. Um, maybe it's the day Carty find, scores, you know what I mean? He 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 scores because he's been working very hard up front for Pats, but they need Pats need to get a bit of support to Carty, whatever they do, they need to get a bit of support to Carty, um, because Derry will probably, you know, they that'd be. Meat and drink, like you know, that kind of way. Um, Derry just one nil, I think. I think Derry just might do enough to win this one nil. So, guys, we'll leave it there. Let me know what you think of the comments. Let me know what you think about any of the games that went on over last weekend. Um, for your predictions, how is your team going to do in the cup? Subscribe to the channel, hit your bell notification button. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye.